there, Chef Donna here, and welcome to Everyday Homemade. Everyday Homemade is designed to teach you the basics of cooking, all the while making something delicious and homemade for your family. Today, I am going to be making a maple chicken dish. It also has acorn squash and carrots, a little bit of red onion. We're going to start it on the stove top, and then we're going to finish it in the oven. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing I'm going to do is get our chicken thighs cut up. They're rather large, so I'm going to cut them in half. Then I'm going to cut up the carrots. I'm going to slice them in half because they'll cook a little bit faster that way. And then I have an acorn squash. I'm going to take the seeds out and then slice it up. And then I also have a red onion. But the first thing I'm going to do is this chicken. So I want to like clean off the excess fat just so I don't have too much of that in my fry pan. And they're rather large, so I want to cut them down so they're not so big. Next is the carrots. And it's easier if you dump them all out onto your board. You can slice them in half all at once. Just like that. This is the acorn squash I'm gonna cut up. So this is a heart, it's like in the gourd family, so it's a hard squash. So I usually try to use my serrated knife and get into the top of it just to get a little bit of traction. And then I'll slice it right in half. Now a trick when you're slicing something with a big knife or just a knife, put a towel on this end of it so your hand doesn't slip off and then get cut by the edge of the knife. I've seen it happen too many times to other people. So that's a good quick tip. I'm gonna go ahead and get the seeds out and get it sliced up. Have is this red onion and I want to cut it into a large dice. I don't want the piece to kind of like the pieces of onion to kind of melt away in the dish. I want you I want to be able to see them in the dish. So that's why I'm going to do a large dice. waiting for my pan to come up to heat and today this dish I'm actually going to make it for a friend of mine her whole family is sick so I want to make her some food and bring it over so I bought these aluminum containers so I'm going to put them right into here so then she can just stick it right in the oven and warm it up for their dinner tonight so my pan is coming up to heat it's not quite hot yet so I'm going to wait a few more minutes and let it get nice and hot so we can sear those chicken breasts and get some nice chicken thighs 
and get some nice color on them. I'm gonna add some oil to the pan. And then I'm gonna put the first batch of chicken in. I'm gonna leave some of it out, so I have dinner tonight too. So I'll take some to her house and then I'm gonna leave some here. So I'm gonna put these in and let them get nice and golden brown on one side. Well, I'm going to season them real quick with some salt and pepper. My second batch of chicken is ready to come out of the pan. It's nice and brown. And then we just have one more batch to sear off. You may notice I'm putting it in the same container the raw chicken was in. And you might be wondering why I'm doing that. I'm doing that because it doesn't matter. I'm not finished cooking the chicken here. So there is no cross-contamination to worry about. Is my third batch going in? Because the chicken isn't cooked all the way through and I'm gonna continue cooking it, it isn't gonna bother it to be in this dirty dish. So there, I get all the chicken in. I'm gonna throw some salt and pepper on. I'm going to put my nice little grid over it so I don't get too much fat splashing out everywhere from the chicken thigh. All of the chicken is seared and set aside. So I'm going to go ahead and saute up the red onion a little bit and kind of get that going. So I just wanted to soften a little bit before I add all the other vegetables and we get it in the oven. My onion is starting to soften, so I'm going to add in the carrots. And then I'm going to add in the acorn squash. I'm going to quickly season it, a little salt and pepper, then I'm going to place the chicken thighs right on top of our vegetables and then get it into the oven. All right. This dish is so quick and easy and just delicious. I love chicken thighs. They're always so tender and they do so well on a longer cook. There's a little bit of juice left in this dish. I'm gonna add that in. And then I'm gonna pour one cup of maple syrup right over the top. All right, so now I'm gonna put it in the oven 350 degrees for about a half an hour and then I'll check to see if my veggies are tender and the chicken has cooked all the way through. I'm going to check the chicken. It's been about 30 minutes. It's been in the oven. oven. So I'm going to go ahead and check to see if the carrots are nice and soft. And they are. And then the acorn squash is nice and soft. So I'm going to get the chicken out of the pan and then we're gonna reduce the sauce. I'm gonna let the sauce boil and reduce down to like a syrupy type of consistency. Then I'm gonna add the chicken thighs back in and then coat them. So we're just gonna let this reduce. And I have this on the handle because I had it in the oven. You always have to be careful if you put any kind of handled like saute pan in an oven, the handle gets super, super hot. And I have burned myself a couple of times grabbing a hot handle and burning all of my fingers in my palm. If you remember, I was going to leave out some of the chicken for me for dinner later. So this one has reduced down already and see how syrupy and thick it is. I'm just like coating the chicken with it. 
and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge and have it later for dinner. My husband isn't a fan of acorn squash and carrots and such. He's not a big vegetable person. But he does like broccoli, so I think I'm just going to steam some broccoli tonight and put it with this dish. Here you can see the sauce thickening up. And I'm going to add the, chick the chicken thighs right back into it. And just give them a good toss and like coat them with it. The vegetables were actually cooking in the maple syrup while it was in the oven. So they have a nice flavor to them already. But I want to make sure the chicken is well coated. I'm going to go ahead and get the chicken out of this pan and put it right back into our tin. Probably easier just to dump it, so let's do that. I'm going to get all of the sauce out. Of course, I will scrape it out so I make sure I get all of the sauce. If you know me, you know I love sauce, so I never let sauce go to waste. There we go. So I'm going to let this cool for a few minutes, and then I'm going to package it up with some tin foil and then take it to my friend's house so her family has dinner tonight. Before I put my serving into the refrigerator, I want to go ahead and give it a quick taste. Get a, a little extra sauce on me. Mm. Mm -hmm. The chicken is nice and tender. And it has a really nice strong maple flavor. It's really quite delicious. I want you to try this at home. Today, you learned how to properly sear a protein in a stainless steel pan. I showed you that it will easily turn over in the pan when it's ready. So you just have to wait for it to release itself once it's nice and golden brown. I hope you enjoyed the recipe today. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to never miss an episode. And leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. So until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day and you keep it homemade every day. Bye everyone.